so for this episode I've decided to speed the video up about four to four times um, simply to get through it all this this took about 40 minutes um, to actually film essentially I'm putting down the base coats for the skin tone the dress um, the wood of the bow and a couple of other bits and pieces um, the um, the white square on the right hand side is just a um, basic tile that I bought from a hardware store and it suffices quite well as a palette you can get quite fancy palettes um, plastic palettes, ceramic palettes and um, they, they even do sort of wet palettes that you can use um, but I find for this kind of painting um, the, the white tile works quite well for me um, as you can see I've watered down the paint um, this is very important for sort of this kind of painting um, because although it's going to take you sort of three or four coats um, to actually get a decent coverage on the model and you'll see this um, a, a lot better later on when I paint the um, paint the dress the the dress took about three or four good coats to actually cover um, the reason for that is that you want nice thin coats so that um, you don't end up clogging up details with thick paint um, you need to be very careful that you don't do that because otherwise you're just going to lose detail essentially um, also when you're when you're painting on base coats like this you always want to start with um, sort of the, the part of the mini that's closest to the center or it's kind of difficult to describe but essentially it's skin outwards um, so you paint the skin tones first then you'd go in and paint sort of like the clothes um, and any other details like that then you'd go sort of a stage further out maybe they've got shoes on um, sort of the the items that they're holding that kind of thing um, and the reason for this is that sort of it's a lot more difficult to um, sort of get into get into the details get into the creases and as you can see there I've just finished off with the um, skin tones um, and it's, it's a lot easier to sort of paint over a colour than it is to actually sort of paint into um, a recess of course you can always go back and just touch up any areas that need it later on that's not a problem um, I've tried to keep the miniature in shot at all times um, one thing I've wanted to do with this sort of painting tutorial is that you'll see every single brush stroke I make on the miniature um, and yeah it's going to take some time but there are some situations where I've had to sort of um, sort of push the miniature over a bit and maybe it's sort of blocked or I've been daft and it's gone off the screen but for, for the most part I've tried to make um, tried to make it so you can see as much of the miniature as possible at all times so on this bit I'm just going over the the green cloth and you can see the the white highlight is showing through um, sort of quite a lot on the cloth um, this the, the green is going to need several coats green is one of those colors in paint that just doesn't cover um, I've never had a decent deep green from pretty much any manufacturer so far um, the Vallejo ones they do a, a deep green in their game color um, that just doesn't cover at all and I forgot to put enough on my palette for this one so again just a quick water down even if the paint ends up like this so that it's just not covering you still want to water down your paints um, you don't want to sort of get lazy and, and try and sort of cover with thick paint because you will just lose detail you'll begin to see brush strokes in the paint itself and that's the last thing you want um, so just sort of touching up here and there and you can see I made a mistake and just sort of covered her face in green paint easiest way to get rid of that if it's still wet um, if you're fast enough you can get in there with a wet brush and pretty much just turn it into an extremely thin wash um, at which point in time it just pretty much won't show up I think later on I actually end up sort of going back onto the face and just touching it up a little bit here and there but of course you can do that at any point it's not an issue when I'm when I'm painting um, these kind of things, I mean this this is just base coats. There's no there's no highlighting, there's no shading on this. This is just purely base coats. And you can see I'm going back for what's that a third time over the base of that dress to get a decent coverage. And it's still going to need another coat after that as well, possibly even more coats. Um, sort of picking up a few bits and pieces that I missed there. 
So, yeah, I mean, this, this part, you know, is, there's not much to say about it, really. It literally is just laying down colour, making sure that you've covered all of the areas that need to be in that specific colour. So now, we, now we're going on to the red, and this, this is going to be, it's a, it's a sort of reddish brown. It's a really nice colour, actually. Um, uh, Blood Tracker Brown from um, P3, I believe it is. Um, I'll check on that, though. And just sort of painting that onto the bow. Uh, if you remember from the original version of this mini, uh, the original Arfanil miniature that I painted, the, the ends of the bow sort of blended out to a lighter colour. So I'm going to do that again on this. Um, this is it's essentially going to be the same colour scheme as the previous miniature. So that sort of it, sort of it's a continuation for me. Um, but I'm going to hopefully do a better job of a so I quickly coated those. I've also coated up the um, quiver. Most of the, well you can see there's a lot of sort of um, fine bits and pieces on the quiver and sort of around her, um, around her sort of dress and things at the top there. I'm not entirely sure what colour I'm going to do those yet, but we'll work on that as we go along. The original miniature I painted in a sort of goldeny sort of bronzy goldeny colour and I wasn't too happy with the way that came out. Um, I'll probably I probably won't paint this one with metallics. Now here I, I went in and actually started painting up the, the the base and the branches that she's standing on and things on the base in that sort of same red. Um, but I quickly came to the conclusion that it wasn't going to work. It was it was too powerful a red. Um, there, was, there was too much red within the brown to actually sort of paint the whole thing and I also got fed up of the um, paint pot I'd got her standing on because it just kept on falling off there wasn't enough blue tack on there I'll tack her back on later on after this and yeah again sort of occasionally got my thumb in the way so I painted that up and I started painting painting this and it was at this point in time that I decided that the colour really wasn't working so I uh, changed over to using, picked out some of the um, sort of roots and things that were on the base and changed over to using the, um, this is the um, umbral umber I think it is, um, it's essentially a burned umber, very dark brown and I tried that on the tree stump that's on the base, much preferred it so I then went back and painted over everything else and actually, the um, the mixture of the um, the brown and the reddy brown worked quite well. I was quite pleased with that. Um, I think we'll probably use that as a base coat for for everything. I mean, the the rest of the the rest of the base is pretty much going to be sort of greens, yellowy greens, that kind of thing for the leaves. Um, there's a few rocks on there, I think, um, but that's essentially it. So there we go. Finished off. Here we go. This is, this is the uh, fourth or fifth coat of green. You have to wait for them to dry um, between between sort of coats. Otherwise, all that's going to happen is you just end up lifting off wet paint that was down there previously, um, and you just end up leaving a gap that you then have to cover up again. So you're much better off leaving the uh, leaving each coat to dry for as long as possible. Um, and being fairly thin, um, the coats don't take that long to dry. Know, sort of five, five, ten minutes, if that, and each each coat's pretty much dry. Certainly enough to paint over again, anyway. Um, technically, the um, acrylic paints don't completely become waterproof and for about 24 hours, but you can usually paint over them fairly quickly afterwards. And just a quick bit of um, clean up on the flesh tones where I touched it with the green, but beyond that, that's that's the base tones. So you can see sort of the kind of colours that we're going for. So there you go.